morning, happy new year. Welcome to 2021. And our first, sorry, I'm taking my slippers off as I talk to you. Our first shibashi set of the year. So happy new year, everyone. I think we should get a few in today. It's, uh, the temperature's definitely dropped now. Hi, Jane, good morning. Nice to see you. Yes, it's a bit nippy, so we'll have a bit of a stretchy session. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi, Janet. Oh, everyone's waiting for me today. So we're back to work, back to normal here. Um, apart from being in tier four, so not going anywhere other than absolute necessities. Um, and he's back in the print, uh, working away with the squeegee. So hopefully we won't get any interruptions. And I hope you've got a nice warm place to do a bit of practice too. Um, Right, we're in a bit of a muddle here because I'm still in the kitchen decorating mode. So uh, the ceiling's had its second coat, so that bit's finished now. And hopefully this afternoon I can start to put a bit of colour on. So, yes, a little bit chilly. Make sure you've got your warm and comfortable as possible. Grab a bottle of water, make sure you've got something to sip at as we work out. Um, news resolutions i don't know whether you make them or not i've never been a huge believer in them i think when you want to make a change you do that regardless and putting the pressure of the new year um which is kind of just a invented thing by human beings it doesn't really nature doesn't know it's the start of a a new year as in the first of january um everything happens regardless of our calendar but if you are looking at um weight loss moving more all those sorts of things giving up this giving up that um a lot of people ask me with the shibashi will this help me lose weight and the short answer is no um but the long answer is no just doing the shibashi alone you're not going to drop pounds um but overall if you start doing something positive like this it can kick start and encourage you into other changes so by feeling better by doing the shibashi you are less likely to stuff that packet of biscuits eat that block of cheese um all the rest of it so by doing the shibashi it's a good stepping stone into into starting to make some changes um it's fantastic for people who are doing absolutely nothing um, and it might be the push you need to start doing more um, other exercise. It might just be you're happy with the shibashi and that's fine. Um, the mental health side of this is, is, is the biggest boost, I think. You feel better. If you can move a bit easier, things are a little less painful, then with everything else you do, you will do a little bit more, you'll do it a bit easier. Um, losing weight, there's no easy way to lose weight. All these things, um, Weight Watchers, Slimming World, calorie counting, they all work, but you've got to stick at them. Uh, the simple equation is moving more and putting less in, but you still need to make sure you're putting the right amount of stuff into your body. Um, so it's absolutely starving yourself is not a good idea at all. So I always say to people, if you're really serious about committing to, to trimming a few pounds off, then go back to cutting out all the processed food. That's a really good start point. So if you need to get motivated, dig the cookbooks out. Um, the more you can make from scratch, the better. I actually, a couple of years ago, was lucky enough to see um, a Q&A with Mary Berry in Bath, who has got a fantastic figure, um, as, as all you know out there. And uh, somebody actually asked her in the audience, would she be doing a low-cal um, cookbook for the future? And she said, no, absolutely not. She said, you have good food, you eat less of it. So it's perfectly all right to bake that cake, uh, but you have one small slice. You don't sit and pig the whole lot. Um, so make use of the freezer. If, you, if, you're, if there's only one or two of you at home and you really fancy something like a lemon drizzle cake then make it have a slice each slice the rest up stick it in the freezer make sure you take that piece of cake out once a week to treat yourself maybe after your shibashi class so um on my little positive pep talk we're going to stand up and get going 
So hi Nanny Blossom, see you're there. I've still got my socks on and I've still got my jumper on. It's a bit nippy until I get warmed up. So, feet facing forwards. Hope you're all doing okay. Just your clothing if you need to. I've got very warm trousers on and the jumper, so we'll start with this, but I might have to shed a layer or two in a bit. So we're gonna have feet hip bone distance apart, arms nice and relaxed at the side of the body, a little gentle, slight tilt back of the pelvis, so trying to get the spine in a neutral position. So imagine a bit of lengthening coming from the breastbone up, top of the head. Start slowing that breathing down. We're gonna move the head from right, slowly round to the left, gently stretching out the neck. Now obviously ceiling painting, I had quite a stiff neck last night. So a little stretch to each side with the neck. Then drop the chin down and half circle from one side, dropping down through the center, over to the other side. Gentle stretch of the neck. Now remember you can do most of these stretches in a seated position if you need to. Bring the head to center. We're gonna bring one hand up and put it on the opposite shoulder. So you're gonna hold that shoulder down with your hand and stretch away from it. Just gently stretching the side of the neck. Holding that for four or five seconds if you can. And then bringing the head back to center. We're gonna do twice more this side. So just leaning the head over to stretch out the side of the neck back to center, one more. So think you're going up and over with the head to get as much of a stretch as you can manage in that side of the neck. Back to center, change hands. So drop one arm down, bring the opposite arm up on that shoulder and stretch the neck away from it. Back to center and then a gentle stretch over. Don't go so far that it hurts at all. And coming back to center, third one for this side. Coming back, gonna take the hands behind the back of the neck, interlink your fingers, and we're going just where the top of the back of the head reaches the neck, so you're supporting your neck there, the elbows pointing forwards if you can and just gently stretch the nose up so you're stretching the, the head going backwards into those hands but you're supporting it all the time bringing forwards so chin and nose is going up supporting the back of the neck don't want to throw the head back and you're looking up towards the ceiling coming back down. You might feel in the triceps of the arms, you might feel the stretch there as well. So stretching the head back, looking up to the ceiling. Dropping the hands down, facing forwards again. Just going to move the eyes, so looking up, down, right and left. Up, down, right and left. And again, keep going with this. Now I notice looking back at some of my videos, if I'm not really careful, when I do the lefts and rights, my head moves a tiny bit with it. So try and concentrate on keeping that head absolutely still as you look to all the four compass points with those eyes. One more, up, down, right and left. And bring the shoulders all the way up to the ears and let them drop. Bringing both shoulders up and drop them. One more, bring them up, let them drop. Then we'll do one shoulder coming up, let it go. And the other.
together. Alternating shoulders, up to the ear, let them go. One more each side. And you take right arm, circle that whole arm forwards and around. Big a circle as you can manage. Three circles forwards. And then three circles back. Changing arms, going forwards with the full arm, up and around. Trying to get a bit of movement in the shoulders. As always, keep the movement smaller if you need to. And taking it back. Hands to the front of the shoulders. And we're going to circle the elbow, going forwards and around. Doesn't matter which arm you pick. Three circles forwards and three going back and think about that elbow is drawing the circle. Changing sides, circling forwards and around. And then circling back. Drop the arms, going to stretch long through both sides of the body. So this is one arm up to the sky, one reaching down to the earth. Straight arms if you can. You're turning the head and then glancing up towards that top arm. So you hold the length in both sides for a couple of breaths. And change sides. So reach up and a push down. No side bending here. Getting length in both sides of the body. One more to each side. So think up and long. Particularly this side, the pushing down to the earth side. Make sure you're not bending over at all and shortening that side. One more to the other side. Reaching up and pushing down. Drop the arms, bow and arrow, stretch across the front line. So pointing one arm out, try and make sure you keep the shoulder down. As you look down that long arm, pull back across the chest. Turning the head, looking down that towards that pointed finger. Changing size, stretching across the front. And maybe the back, top of the back, you might feel a stretch there. Drop the arms and swing them around the torso. Bring the hands up, tapping the front of the shoulders. Nice brisk swing. And then arms to the front, soft elbows, soft wrists. You know where you're going here, we're gonna circle the hands in. Just moving at the wrist if you can. Trying to keep the elbows and shoulders relaxed and down, circling back. Two strong fists, knuckles facing away from you, trying to keep the back of the hand nice and flat here. So you're not dropping the wrist down or pulling it back, nice flat wrist. And then stretch those fingers out as wide as you can get them. Back into fists, big stretch out of the hand. Release the fingers, going to turn the right hand palm up, gently pull back on the fingers, so you're stretching out the inner wrist. And changing hands, gently pulling back on the fingers. Kidney wiping's coming up next, the heels of the hands into the lower back, push down and out, pushing down and out. Working those shoulders and warming up the lower back, encouraging the blood to get into those muscles before we start moving them too much. Pushing down and out. Try and speed this up if you can. And don't worry about where those hands are reaching. 
Drop the hands to the side, give them a wiggle. We're going to circle the hips. Circling one way. You've got your imaginary hula hoop. And then going back the other way. We're now starting to bring some movement into the ankles. And coming down to the knees. So give the knees a good rub. Look towards the floor if you can, so you're not putting any stress on the back of the neck. Or rub in and around the whole knee joint. Give it a bit of love. And if that's all you can do with your knees, then just keep rubbing them. But the rest of us, we're going to keep fingertips on the knees and circle both knees inwards. And then circle them out. But again, the ankles are starting to move. You'll feel your feet moving around. Fingertips staying on the knees. Look up to the right. Back through the centre to the left. Going from one side to the other. Should be feeling a bit warmer now, hopefully. Standing back up. Going to heel tap to the front, so you're going to bring up one foot, heel to hand. Other foot, heel to hand. So your heel's going to the opposite hand in front of you. Shifting the weight from one side to the other, starting to work on the balance. Remember, keep the top of the body nice and neutral, so you're not bending forwards or you're not bending back to do this. Don't worry if you don't hit the heel. It's somewhere near. And then bringing the foot up behind, exactly the same. Again, depending on what your muscles are doing. First couple there, I definitely wasn't hitting my heel. The more you do it, the closer it gets. You might find one side you can reach easily. The other side feels like it's miles away. Flipping that foot up and tapping it if you can. Now facing forwards, we're going to lift up the right heel. So you're on the ball joints of the toes of the feet. I don't know if you can see my feet, but you know very well. Let's move back a little bit. Circle that ankle round one way. And circle it back the other way. So you're moving from the hip joint and the ankle joint. Drop that heel down, changing feet. So onto the ball joints of the toes of that foot, circling the ankle. Yeah, my toes are clicking today. And back the other day, back the other way. I need to roll my feet out on the spiky ball. Right, heel down. I'm going to take right foot half a step forwards, lifting and lowering from the front of the foot. So toes coming up, lower back down. So we're trying to get a gentle calf stretch. Weight's gone into your standing leg, so you're also thinking about your balance as you lift and lower. Then turn the foot and the whole leg from the hip out to the side, so keeping the body facing forwards, lift and lower. Feeling that stretch up the side of the leg, up into the bottom. Step the foot back, we're going to do the same with the other one. So slightly forwards and a gentle calf stretch. As you lift and lower that foot, keeping the heel on the ground, pulling those toes up, and then turning the leg out to the side, lift and lower.
coming back to the centre, feet are facing forwards. We're going to march through the feet, so we're marching toe, toe, heel, heel. Outside foot, outside foot, inside foot, inside foot. And we're going to get a bit of speed up. So toe, toe, heel, heel. Out, out, in, in. Toe, toe, heel, heel. Out, out, in, in. Try not to look at your feet while you're doing this. Toe, toe, heel, heel. Out, out, in, in. Toe, toe, heel, heel. Out, out, in, in. Toe, toe, heel, heel. Out, out, in, in. Two more. Super. Warm up completed. Grab my water. Oh, it's chatting. Dry my throat up. Hi, Paul. Good morning. Hi, Debbie. So, hopefully, everyone's a bit warmer now. And we're going to um, start with some of the basics, really. So, in the Shibashi set, um, I'm going to instruct you on the breathing so you can try and get your breathing slowed down, matching. As always, if I'm moving too fast for you, then go a little bit slower. Um, if you need to move faster because you're not holding the breath for as long, I'm aiming for about five seconds for the demos, but you can be looking at whatever your breathing works at. at. So if you're struggling to hold your breath, don't um, struggle, 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 and then gasp. Try and breathe naturally through this. So if you can hold your breath a bit longer, slow the movement down slower than me, then go for it. I'm just leading this um, and giving you a guide what you're doing, especially in the privacy of your own home, then that's entirely up to you. So go a little bit slower, a little bit faster, whatever you need to do to make you feel comfortable and relaxed. You shouldn't be struggling, okay? Anything's a struggle, then scale it back down. Right, 70% effort. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start in Wuji, our start position as always. I'm not going to break the jumper off before we start. I think I might. Socks are staying on though. I think you can see me a bit better with that a woolly jumper on. Okay, starting with feet hip bone distance apart. Soften those knees so we're not having dead straight legs. Don't lock the knees back, just slightly soft. Tilt the pelvis very slightly back. Think about some extra length through that front section of the body. So long through here. Long through the centre of the crown of the head. So there's a golden thread pulling you as tall as you can be. Shoulders are relaxed and down. Arms hang loosely at the side, a little bit out from the body with soft elbows, soft wrists and fingers relaxed, slightly curled inwards, space between all the fingers. Now have a think through the body as you slow the breathing down. It might help you to close your eyes and think about having equal weight through both feet. Think about the weight being equally distributed between the heels and the ball joints of the feet. So there's equal pressure all the way through the feet, nice and solid to the ground. Buttocks are relaxed, so make sure you're not clenching your bum. Jaws relaxed. No tension through the neck. Face is nice and relaxed. So hopefully you're not frowning at me. And take some long deep breaths as you relax into Wuji. In and out through the nose if you can, or in through the nose and out through the mouth if that's easier. As you breathe in, feeling the tummy expand all the muscles relax and as you breathe out you're starting with the pelvic floor front and back muscles squeezing that air out 
all the way through. And then you breathe in, let everything go. Take a breath in. And out. Breathing in. And out. We're going to step out to commence. So as you step out, slightly lower through the knees. I'm going to take a breath in. Straighten up through the legs, bringing the hands up. And then breathe out, lower it all back down. Breathing in. And out. So imagining you've got two balloons of air under those hands as they come gently upwards towards the face. And then you've let the balloons go, the elbows are pulling you back down. Breathing in. And you come up as tall and as long as you can on that in-breath. And then you gently sink back down on the out breath. Keeping those knees back behind the toes. Think about the bottom going very slightly back. Your gym bunnies, think about the start of that squat movement. And out. Broadening one's chest. Breathing in, arms coming out at shoulder level, breathing out. Just straightening up through the legs on that in breath, keeping the elbows soft, keeping the shoulders relaxed and down. Trying to work both legs equally, so be conscious if one leg is working harder than the other. And don't take the arms back too far when they're out here. The chest shouldn't be popping forwards. The hands stay in your peripheral vision. Gaze is forward very slightly down if you're not following the screen. Breathing out. Dancing with the rainbow. So we're straightening up. We're going to bend into one knee, bringing the arms up as we turn to the side. Breathing out as you change sides. So breathing in. Eyes following that top hand as it moves across. Then you turn the head, eyes picking up the other arm. Right. Just sinking the weight into that bent leg. Breathing in. And out. Two more sets. Breathing in. Remember, you're not throwing the head backwards or forwards. It's just turning from one side to the other. Breathing in, coming back to the centre, circling arms. You're going to lower the arms down, sink at the knees. That's your out breath. As you breathe in, arms coming up. And then turning the hands as you breathe out. So you're making a Big a circle as you're comfortable with. Breathing in and out. Wrists are very close together, don't need to actually touch. Breathing in and out. Straightening 
up through the legs on the in breath feeling tall as you reach this position and then lowering it back down on the out breath and breathing out One more because I've lost count. Breathing in and out. Okay, twist waist, swinging arm. So as you breathe in, bring the hands palm up and straighten up through those legs. We're going to take a breath out. Reach one arm forward, palm up. Drop the other one back as you turn to that side. Breathing in, arm comes up and over past the ear. Then you come back to centre, pulling the front arm back and crossing the hands with a small gap between them on that out breath. Dropping the opposite arm back, taking a breath in and out. So it's twisting waist. Remember, all that movement is coming from the waist. Breathing in and out. You're trying to keep that pelvis facing forwards. Waist is turning. Breathing in, arm comes up and around. Breathing out, cross those hands in front of you. Last one to this side. Okay, only twisting as far as you can comfortably get. You should feel it through the side of the waist, all in here. Drop the arms back, backs of the hands facing away from you. Breathing in, row in a boat. Breathing out, lower those hands down. Heels still staying on the floor for this. Feet haven't moved since we started. Breathing out. So backs of the hands face away. Those shoulders are doing the turning as you breathe in. And then palms facing the floor on that out breath. Straightening up through the legs on the in breath. And lowering down on the out breath. Start of the squat. Breathing in. And out. We're going to move into holding a ball. So this time, whichever hand you take, take your hand in the same leg. You're going to raise the heel as you reach across the body with the hand palm up, coming up onto the toes. It's your in-breath. Turn that hand and breathe out as you lower the heel back down and the hand comes across the centre line, changing hands, opposite heel, breathing in. Reaching as far as you can, but keeping that elbow still soft. Breathing out. Now, if you can, you're going to bring the heel up as well on the standing leg. Breathing in. And out. Make sure you don't drop the head forwards or back. You're going to follow the palm of that hand with your eyes. And then the back of your hand with the eyes as it comes across the body. The eyes looking down, picking up the other hand, breathing in and out. Last one to this side. Both heels up if you can. Challenge your balance, make those legs work. Breathing out. Heels staying down, both hands now carrying the move. Breathing in, turning from the waist. And breathing out, back through centre. So palms facing each other, staying the same distance apart. Breathing in. And out. So 
carrying the moon. Looking back at the moon, some people call this. There's quite a lot of different names for all of these moves. Hopefully mine are pretty simple. Breathing in. Glancing back under that top armpit. Breathing out through the center. We'll do one more to this side. Breathing in. And out. Then we'll take an in-breath, bringing the elbows into the side of the body, but carry on turning, breathing out, push the heel of hand away, breathing in to bring that hand back, so twist waist, push palm, breathing out, and in, pushing the heel of the hand on the out breath, and then breathing in to pull the arm back. Using powerful arms. Breathing in. As you push away, don't fully extend the arm. Still keeping soft at the elbow. Breathing in. If you're not sure if you're turning the right way, it's your outside arm. The direction you're facing. Okay, this time push that heel of the hand out, we're changing to playing with clouds. So turn the palm to face you, bring it in towards your face. Bottom hand is here, slightly closer to the torso. Take an in-breath, top elbow leading the way. Change the hands over, breathing out. And in. And out. Eyes are focused on the palm of that top hand. And make sure you haven't stuck the thumb up in the air, keeping the thumb joint nice and relaxed. Fingers are relaxed. Trying to get the forearm as straight as possible. So if you need to, bring the top arm down lower. Your shoulder won't allow it up at your nose level. Bring the arm down lower so you can keep a straight forearm. What I don't want you to be doing is dropping the elbow but still having the hand in front of your face. So keeping that elbow nice and parallel to the ground. Breathing in and out. Now we're off to the side, so we're going to, whichever side you're at, drop those hands down, take the leg, have the foot forward and turn it. This is the direction we're going now. I move back a little bit so you can see me. So standing leg is still facing forwards, is facing me. The direction we're going, the foot's facing out. We're going out over this knee. So you're going to take a breath in as you lift the back heel. Scoop and see. And then you're going to lower that back heel and lift the front toes. Breathing in, reaching forwards. And breathing out. Breathing in. Challenging your balance all the time. Breathing out. Now you can go down as far low as you're comfortable with. And then when you come back, you take it back into a little bit of extension if you can manage the balance. But keep the move small if you need to. Breathing in. And out. Last one, keeping those hands relaxed. And as you breathe out through the center, dropping your hands down, change the direction of the feet. So straighten up the standing leg and turn out the other way. I'm gonna take a breath in, back heels coming up. Bend the toes. Now make sure 
as you're lifting the toes up, you don't lock out the knee on that leg. So we're still keeping a soft knee here. Breathing in. And out. Not throwing the head forwards or back. You shouldn't feel anything necky at all with this. Keep the movement smaller the moment anything starts to hurt. Scoop in the sea and reaching up to the sky. We'll stay this side playing with waves. Heels of the hands as you breathe out. Fingers pulling back as you breathe in. On that in breath, raising the front toes. On the out breath, drop the toes, lift the heel. Now if you need to have a double check of that back foot, make sure the foot is still facing forwards, not twisted in and aiming the same way as your other foot tends to happen, especially with socks on, get a bit of a slide going on. Breathing in. Out. Breathing in to centre, we're going to change sides, so straightening up the standing leg, turning the other way, breathing out. And in. So take your stance on the floor to where you can comfortably stay rooted and grounded. You might need to take your feet a little bit wider apart or a bit cl more closer together. And try not to speed up too much with this movement. If you've mastered your slow breathing, very easy to get carried away here. If you're not sure about the timing, be thinking in your head. One, two, three, four, five. And back, two, three, four, Five, pushing away, and back. Okay, stay in this side, spreading wings. So you're going to push away the same on that out breath, then turn the palms to face you. Breathing in, arms are coming back. Breathing out, and in. So again, check those thumbs, keeping them relaxed and down. Still rocking through the feet. Hands aren't meeting each other, they're staying at shoulder distance apart. So as you reach forward, don't come any closer together with the hands and your shoulders. If you're not sure, think of a 12 inch ruler, don't go any closer than that. If anything, keep it wider. Back to centre on the in-breath, change those feet around, breathing out, and in, got at least six breaths to this side. Concentrate on your balance. Movement slow and beautiful. And 
lower those arms a little bit if they're fatiguing and you're feeling it too much in the shoulders. Last one. Coming back to centre on the in-breath, elbows into the side, straighten the feet up, shoulder width apart at least, if not a bit further, soften the knees. Punch in, so fists facing up, good strong arms. And take a breath in, and then on the out breath, you're going to punch away, turning that arm. Breathing in to pull it back. Breathing out, and in. So coming out at shoulder height if you can. Slow but powerful arms. Breathing it in as you pull it back. Breathe out. Keep that elbow soft and relaxed. We're not going into a full extension of the arm. You're not actually making contact, but you've got all that power in the arm ready, just in case you need to. Last one, breathing out. And in. Release the hands to the side of the leg. And a little wiggle if you need to. Little fingers towards the front of the thighs. You're going to fly like a wild goose. So it's a breath in. We're coming up onto the toes. Hands coming up. And then breathing out. Lowering the heels slowly. And slightly sinking into the legs. Breathing in. Both heels coming up. And both heels coming down. Breathing in. And out. Now you'll really notice here if you're working one leg more than the other one. Because your heel will hit the ground before the other one does. You're trying to get them both to lower and touch the ground at the same time. Breathing in. And out. Well, my right one went down first then by quite a way. We've all got a side we favour, so you're working hard to lower them equally. That's better. Breathing in. Last one this is. And out. Okay, heels stay flat, both hands now, palms facing each other. You're going to take a breath in, bringing the hands up and around because this is a full movement. And then breathing out as you bend at the waist through the bottom. So keep the movement smaller if you need to. Breathing in. And out. Breathing in, slightly back through midday, breathing out, change direction at the bottom, give the arms a swing, in breath from three o'clock through to midday, down through to nine o'clock, I'm going to hit the plant, <laughs> breathing out from nine o'clock back to three, breathing in. Try not to speed up at the bottom of the movement. You're trying to keep the in-breath and the out-breath equal. Breathing in and out. Coming back up. Now I'll just do a couple, for those of you if you need reminding, smaller movement of this. You're coming, keeping the torso and the head still, bringing the arms around, either just from the forearms, breathing in, and out, or the whole arms, breathing in, and out. Now we're going to bouncing the ball, so you're going to shift the weight into one of your legs, 
whichever leg it is, it doesn't matter. I'm shifting into my right. So you bring the left knee up, so opposite knee up to the hand, breathing in, dropping it back down, breathing out. Now, if you need to, just lift the heel, breathing in and out. If you can, you're going to lift the knee, let the foot dangle, breathing in and out. If you've got the balance, breathing in, lift and lower on the standing leg, breathing out and in. And out. One more to each side. Bounce in a ball. Then feet facing forward, soften those knees, press palms, bring the palms up towards the face. Turn the hands, breathing out. And in, so pulling all that energy up, then turning at the shoulder, breathing out. Straightening up through those legs, so we're starting as we finished, finishing as we started even. Breathing in, collecting up all that energy, keeping the hands soft and relaxed. Breathing out, lowering back down. Start of the squat, pelvis very slightly back. Breathing in. And calming the body and the breathing down, especially after bouncing a ball. It's quite physical. Breathing in. And out. Do one more. Big breath in. Feeling the stomach relax, breathing out, squeezing that air out. Then we're going to step the legs back in, bring the hands into a soft prayer position so you can centre down the front of the body. Left hand, then right hand onto the lower dantian, so it's just below your tummy button. Close your eyes, take some long deep breaths in and out. Concentrate on that breathing. So as you breathe in, feel that tummy expanding behind the hands. And as you breathe out, think about squeezing the air from the pelvis through the stomach muscles, squeezing every last bit of air out. Feel the rib cage drop before you take your breath in and let it all relax. As you're practicing the breathing, feeling nice and calm and quiet. Think about having equal weight through both feet. Knees being slightly softened, buttocks relaxed, shoulders are relaxed and down, hands are relaxed. You're just gently clasped in front of you. Jaws relaxed. You've got that little bit of extra height through the crown of the head being pulled tall and long. Should feel nicely fatigued. Breathing in and out. Okay, thank you all very much for joining in today. Let's send you back into uh, real life, wake you up a bit. So hands rub together. Really, really, really hard rub together of those hands. So you get some friction there. 
and then you're going to take all that energy all the electricity and give the face a good rub in and around the face every bit of it behind the ears back of the neck and then into the scalp take those fingers and have a good old rummage pummel in the scalp really nice and powerful don't be shy with this doesn't matter what your hair looks like you're not going anywhere today okay outside arms big firm tap down the outside of both arms and then up the insides you should be able to hear yourself at least doing this tap and then from the bottom down the legs outside of the legs to the ankles if you can get there and then up the insides then we're going to wipe Outside arms, wipe it away. Inside arms, wiping away. Outside legs, a good wipe all the way down. And inside legs, wiping away. That's it for our first January session. Let's have a look, have a chat before I go. Hi Jill, good morning. Oh, Margaret, hi Margaret. And um, Melanie, nice to see you on here. Paula. Nat, oh gosh, there's a lot of people come on. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, well, thanks all for joining in. Um, as always, any questions, fire me a message um, either on the Tai Chi page or uh, whatever means you've got of getting in touch with me. I don't know how that's depends how you find out about me. Some people do text message, anything at all. So, anything you're not sure about, let me know. Um, keep drinking plenty of fluids. Excuse me while I top up a minute. Okay, remember the shibashi session that you've just done will have the same physical effect on your body as if you've gone for a fairly brisk walk for the same amount of time. So, don't be surprised if you feel a little bit tired and you think, well, oh, you shouldn't be tired. All I was doing was a bit of slow motion moving of arms and legs because you're concentrating on everything physically inside your body it's having exactly the same effect as if you had done that brisk walk and you would expect to be tired after walking for about an hour i don't know how long we've been going for now i've moved my clock so i can't we're decorating the kitchen so i can't so i haven't got a clue what time is at the moment um so yes don't be surprised if you feel a bit tired um hopefully you feel calmer and relaxed uh the hall is still shut at the moment um and to be honest um i think that's likely for definitely the next few weeks um i'm actually in tier four just over the border and mend it from some of you so um which is kind of a bit nuts because if we got ill we'd be going into bath but um i'm not making the rules i'm just trying to stick to them as best i can um so when it's once we are allowed back in the hall there will be classes but hopefully some of you are getting jabs um, I think realistically until the majority of, um, I'd say probably the 70s upwards have been jabbed, things aren't going to change too much. It definitely um, is making a difference where you live, really, the jabs, because um, I had a family friend of ours who is, well, he's just turned 80 now, actually. I spoke to his doctor a couple of days before. He lives up in London, and he's only got one lung, and he's... Um, uh, on um, oxygen the majority of the time every night and sometimes during the day depending on um, what issues are going on and his doctor said to him no you can't have it you're not over 80 so he phoned back on his birthday to get booked in for his whereas my father-in-law who's down in Ruth in Cornwall who is 78 I think um, he had his jab in the first wave so um, he's um, ex cancer bowel cancer but been clear for about eight years so not high risk in that respect and he's already had his so it definitely does depend on where you live um but yeah um so like i say it's it's a bit of a lottery but it will filter out eventually i'm sure of it so yeah once you're jabbed up in the meantime um i'm probably well definitely still once you've had the jab Vitamin D, that's the only thing I've been taking. Um, it's worked fantastically for me for not catching cold bugs and things like that. So vitamin D is the one I would recommend taking, and I've heard that from other sources as well. Other than that, diet, keep the food fresh as possible, which I know is difficult because we're not going out, but hopefully you've got your shopping orders coming in. 
um, cooking from scratch, trying to get as much as you can in through your diet. And a nice, calm, shibashi practice as often as you can. You don't have to wait all week for me to come online. You can um, pick up any of the other videos or, or do this one again and again. It's entirely up to you. Try and do it most days if you can. Um, try and get a 20 minute set in. Try it on your own. See how much you can remember. You might be surprised. And um, oh, what else was I going to tell you? Well, it's got, oh yes, YouTube. I'm transferring these videos, most of them, the ones that are letting me, onto my YouTube channel. Um, if you have a search on there, there is a link on the Shibashi on Facebook, but for anyone on YouTube, Sharon Elizabeth Mead is the name I've got on the moment. I will change that at some stage when, excuse me, when I can think of something uh, good enough, but I haven't, I haven't, I've been brainstorming, but um, I've not got there yet. So if you can, and you are on YouTube and you can find me, I'd love it if you could subscribe. I'm trying to get the subscribers built up a bit because um, YouTube has weird algorithms. So even if you're using the videos through Facebook, but you have access to YouTube and you could put a thumbs up to subscribe or comment, it all helps me get the ratings up. And hopefully this year I can start to focus on that a bit more and reach more people. Hopefully that's the plan. So stay safe, um, stay warm and cozy. Anyone got any problems, issues, queries, or is just feeling a bit fed up, then drop me a message. But I'll be back here next Monday at 10.30 for another live Shibashi set. Um, love to everyone, and hopefully we'll see you in real life in the not-too-distant future. Bye-bye for now.